you find out that uh, Joseph is gone. He's dead. And a new pharaoh has come in who did not know Joseph. And uh, we find that he is twisting things. He tells his people, he says, you know what? These Jews over here, they're more and mightier than we are. And if we're attacked, they will join with the enemy and destroy us. But at that point, there weren't that many. He was lying through his teeth. John's Gospel tells us in John 8, 44, that he is the father of all lies. You know? And so we find out he's a liar. But if you want to talk about the brutality of Satan, it's recorded here. He's heartless, he's cruel. You know, when he tells the uh, <coughs> midwives, he says, look, it, when, a, when a male child is born, you kill it. <coughs> How cruel is that? I mean, let's face it. Helpless, pure, you just want to cuddle with it. He wants to destroy it. That gives you a look at the kind of person you and I are up against. Yeah. You know, as, as we, we studied that or looked at that in the jail, and I was talking about the brutality and cruelness of Satan, I said, and I stopped in the middle, I says, you know what? I says, where else do we find that today? How about Planned Parenthood? Mm -hmm. 60 million babies have been murdered. That's a problem. I'll tell you what, this country has a lot to pay for. Yeah. There's a judgment coming. There's a payday coming. And I have to tell you that uh, with all the things that are going on, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And the shrewdness of our enemy. How about, you know, I, I was reading in the paper some time ago about this guy in the army who had a sex change. Mm -hmm. We paid for it. Mm -hmm. We paid for that. You know, so the shrewdness of our enemy. How many times have I seen people that have been there with their children and everything else and they're telling you, oh, they're so wonderful and so great and they just murdered people. And this is the atmosphere that you and I find ourselves in today. And our enemy is cruel, he's hard, he's heartless, and he's busy. Yeah. And you know what? There's only one way that you can take and defeat this enemy. And that's found in the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, when you, when you go to Exodus 12, you find there's a verse in there. <clears throat> verse 13 of Exodus 12. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house wherein you are. And when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. I want to stop there. Today, people need Jesus Christ more than anything. When we die and we stand before the Lord, do we stand in our own uh, strength? Do we stand there in our own mentality and morality? Do we stand there that way? If we do, we're in big trouble. But when the Lord looks at us, what does he see? He better see the blood. Amen. He better see the blood of that sacrifice on Calvary. The blood of his son, Jesus Christ, who went to the cross. 
You know, it's not his life that saves us, it's his blood that saves us. And when you take a look at the book of Exodus, you see both sides. You see Satan, you see how cruel he is, you see what he does to, 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 to take and destroy people. And he made those Jews slaves. He put them out in the fields, he put them out in places, he beat them. He horribly abused them. And how many times do you find yourself in a battle? I know when I talk to some of the people in the jail, and I ask them about the battle. You know, there's all kinds of battles. And I sit there and I listen to them as they talk. The battle with drugs. The battle with immorality. The battle of violence in their heart. See, you and I are in a battle every single day. And sometimes we say and do things which shows us what we're really like. We're in a battle. You know, it is this, uh, this battle that we find ourselves in. One of the things that I have learned over the years, I repent a lot. <laughs> you know, uh, I find myself having to come to the Lord Jesus Christ asking for forgiveness. That's the only way we can keep that special uh, relationship that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to keep that fellowship going. One of the things that really gets me in that is uh, uh, I don't know how, you know, uh, I don't know if you people have thought about this, but when you walk into a church and sit in a church, how do they go to heaven? That's a good question. One of the things that I find out that there's a lot of people sitting in churches that are not going to heaven. Their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is like an actor. They play the part Sunday after Sunday. They'll get involved in everything else. But you know what? It is our personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and the shedding of his blood and washing us and cleansing us and making us whole that gets us into heaven. It isn't how nice we look. It isn't how nice we talk. It is what the blood of Jesus Christ has done to our lives. It has taken that which has been so corrupt and so vile by sin, and he scrubs it and he makes it whole. He goes into the areas of the heart where no man can go. I, I talked with guys about, you know, uh, they want to send them to psychiatrists and everything else. Well, I feel for them. <laughs> there's not a pill there's not a doctor on this earth can go into the heart deep into the inner recesses of the heart where those precious sins are that cause us to fall only the blood of Jesus Christ has to apply to the heart and as he washes and cleanses us he goes into those areas where no man can go. No pill can go. He goes in there. Oh no my, what a job he does. You know, Paul states it wonderfully. Says, if any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creation. God is building us like, like Tim talked about that clay in the hands of the potter. Every day, God is working in our lives and everything else. He's strengthening us. You know, one of the things that I do a lot, and I push this all the time wherever I go, and that is this. How much time do you spend in the Word? How much time do you spend in prayer? 
If you want to experience the victory of God in your life and you want to overcome those tremendous habits that take you down, that Satan uses to destroy the joy and the happiness of our life, if you want to have victory over that, then there's what you've got to do. You've got to meet with him in the Word every single day. And you've got to pray. I like to do it this way as I pray. I mean, as I'm reading the Scriptures, <coughs> as I read the Scriptures, and I'll, there'll be a, a word or a portion of that verse that will just touch my heart. And, and I'll just open up my heart and I will thank God for what it is saying. I want you to do this in my life. I want you to lift me up. I, whatever it is saying and how God has touched me, I know, I know that I have met with the Lord. I know that I experience His presence. So from that, we get something that is so wonderful. It's called victory. It's overcoming the enemy. It is being strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. That's the only way we can take and overcome the battles. And let me tell you, you'll have not just one battle a day, you'll have a lot. Satan does not give up. And he wants to hurt you and he wants to bring you down. If he could get you to take and shed tears, he'll do it. That's when he, he just raises his voice up and, and he's just praising himself. Look at what we done. We've torn another one down. But you know what? The more you spend time in the Word of God, and the more you spend time with Him, praying, talking with Him, and allowing Him to speak to you through, to your heart through the Word, that Holy Spirit gets a hold of that Word. Hey, listen, when that Holy Spirit gets a hold of that Word in that Scriptures that you are reading, you know, it becomes awesome. It becomes alive. And it becomes moving. And that's when God is picking you up and moving you. That's when God is just really ministering to your heart. How many people, how many people spend time in the Word of God? You know, Jack Wurtzel used to tell us that we needed to uh, have a family altar. I love that phrase, but that's a phrase that's missing out of our vocabulary. We need an altar. What do I mean by that? That's where mom, dad, the kids get together. They'll read a scripture or two. They'll have formed their prayer list, and they begin to pray one for another. From the youngest to the oldest in that wonderful time together. Oh, I've got to tell you, the strengthening that comes from that is awesome. It's awesome. And so we need to be strong in the Lord. We need to spend time in the Word of God and we need to spend time with Him. And we need to ask Him to reveal to us the truths that are in this Word. You know, I've read scriptures and I, over and over and over and over again, and all of a sudden one day I'll be reading scriptures over and I'll, and I know I've read it a hundred times, and I, I look at that and I say, where did that come from? <laughs> it was there all the time. But you know what? It was that time that God brought it to life and God shine that light in our heart and in our soul. It's fantastic. And it's exciting. You know, I walk with the Lord. It's exciting. We've got a living God. We've got a risen God. He's alive. He's powerful. He put this whole world together. What power He has. What wisdom He has. He's our God. That's one thing. But He's our God that He dwells us. That even makes it greater. You know, and that's exciting to me, to have a God who does that, who's alive and working in our hearts and in our lives, who just leads us each step of the way. 
You know, in chapter 2 of Exodus, we have the story of a wonderful woman and her husband, both Levites. And so what happened is this. Moses was born. <coughs> and for three months, she hid him in the house. Yeah. And you, you know, you've seen these movies, Second World War movies, when, when the soldiers were coming from house to house looking for people in there. Well, can you imagine those, those Egyptian soldiers searching your house? looking for a newborn child, a male child, knowing that if they found him, if he cried, if he murmured, they would take that child and they would bring him outside and they would slaughter him outside. And here's this wonderful little woman who, who is, you know, trusting in God. Here's this wonderful little baby. You know what I like about her? She didn't sit there and say, oh, wringing the hands. She had a plan. She had a plan. And you know what? That was a woman of faith. Not only did she have a plan, but she trusted in her God. Key word, trusted. She trusted in her God. And God honored that woman. And you know, you know what's, what was wonderful about that little story? When they brought him down, she had this little ark that she made for him and put him in there. And uh, uh, his sister, Miriam, looked down and went to see Pharaoh's daughter and everything else, you know? You know what's nice about that? Pharaoh's daughter said to Miriam, she says, look, Go find a Jewish woman and let him, let her, uh, nurse this child. And the thing I like about it is, I'll pay you for it. I mean, what a God we've got. You know? And you know, so, so she had her, her wonderful little boy back. And uh, you know, one of the things that you don't read about, but you see the results of when he was having that altercation with one of the Jewish men and he said, who made you the leader over us? Where did, where did, where did they get that idea from? Hey mom, her time wasn't wasted. She would tell him over and over again about her God. She would witness that little baby. She would feed him that word of God, and I'll tell you, as years came along, it paid off. It really did. Hey, Mom, you got a young child? Do you feed it the word of God? Do you tell him about the Lord that saved you? I was in New Jersey. And we were preaching in a church in New Jersey. We were doing a, a live radio broadcast from there at that time. This is going way back. I was talking about Joshua, the book of Joshua, and I was talking about the two monuments. And over on this side, about the fourth row in, as I made the statement, you know, uh, when the children come to ask you, what does this monument mean? stands for our relationship with the Lord. stands for our testimony. And you know what? As I was telling that, there was a man sitting about the fourth row back. He just broke down and cried. You know, women cry one way, men cry another way. When men cry, they way down deep when it's real. I've got to tell you, it was way down deep. You could hear him all over that church. I talked with him after, and he had just lost his son a few weeks before. 
He didn't know if his son was going to heaven or not. He didn't even know if he was going to heaven or not. That's kind of church of life. So I had the opportunity to continue to share the glorious gospel with him. But you know, I said, the God of your salvation will heal your heart. I'm going to end with this story. Part of my duties with the Marine Reserve Unit is I'm part of TACO, which is casualty part. Every Marine that gets killed in our district, the rule is that a captain and a first sergeant and a chaplain would go. If you don't have a chaplain, it's just the first sergeant and the captain. And I've got to tell you, I've been into homes. When you bring that news, the loss of a son or a husband, that's a deep hurt. I've seen the captain almost go to tears, and I've seen the first sergeant, you know, as he fights back the tears and he tries to do the job that he's got to do. And they'll look over at me and they'll say, Chaps, they go. Most of the time I will go and I'll kneel down by the, the individual. I'll put my arm around that individual and I'll tell them something like this. I can't do a thing about the brokenness of your heart. But I know somebody can. And I would pray. And you could actually see God step in. You could see God do something that's there. You can see the tears begin to stop. In other words, God was doing a miracle in the most difficult time. I've seen some of those people after, years after, as a matter of fact. I had one run up and give me a kiss on the cheek. She says, thank you, chaplain. <laughs> but it's awesome what God will do. You know, victory is ours. Victory is ours. Get in the Word. Pray. Fellowship with believers. And experience the presence of God in your life. What a difference it makes. Let me close with this prayer. <coughs> Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, how wonderful it is that you loved us so much that when we were not lovable, you sent your son to us. There he died upon a cross for us. We who were so unworthy, but yet you loved us and made provision for us. Lord, today if there is someone in this room who is not thoroughly convinced of that this morning, may it be settled. Lord Jesus Christ, that you would get all the praise and all the glory. Heavenly Father, we, we just pray for the church for its pastor. Gracious Lord, we ask thy continued blessing. So, Lord Jesus Christ, we ask this in your perfect name. Amen.